forget to subscribe to the 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
Yeah. Jeez, thanks a lot. But and but I do agree with them. Like that crash didn't have to happen. It she could have. They could have been fine. But uh, I felt really bad for her crashing at that point because she was doing really well and she, she had a groove and she was doing great. And then she just out. Next yeah. thing you know, Stay, staying out of trouble. And then the next thing next you, you know, know, somebody just feels like getting somebody out the race of Bristol. You know, I mean, stuff like that happens. I guess. <laughs> oh gosh, but uh, yeah, in the nationwide race, uh, some good racing there as well. Also, mm-hmm. uh, Elton still maintains his lead. Mm-hmm. Um, who was it won at the nationwide race? I didn't get that one either. Oh God! I've been sick. Been sick. Oh God! I have. Here we go. Mm. Anywho, but uh, El Sawyer still holding on to the lead. Um, I was trying to remember who it was. Um, I don't think his name's Uh, but nice guess. I tell you what, I'll be able to. I, I'll have somebody on the phone at seven thirty that'll tell you everything you want to know about All that race. All right. Al Pierce writes for Auto Week magazine. Mm-hmm. Oh, he does. Yes. I know that. And you'll have to ask him his. First interview he ever did, especially with Richard Petty. All right. I'll ask him how that went. Just ask him about it. He'll know exactly because that is the big... I'll just say, tell us about your first interview. And hopefully, he'll probably take it from there. I have a feeling about that. We'll see. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll give him that. I'll, I'll be like, t- I, I, hear, tell- I hear it was Richard Petty had a deal with it. I'll tell, explain about that. And give him a little nudge if he can't. But, yeah, everybody that's new to him that hasn't met him, we always make sure he tells that story because it is hilarious. Oh, boy. See, when he this got, when he, when he got, he used to work for Daily Press. Mm-hmm. He was their racing story writer. Mm-hmm. So... He told them he knew everything about race cars, but he didn't really know anything about race cars. And oh, they gave him the job. That's, this no. is way back when. So, so he learned. Wow. And one of one of his first questions at, at a sprint car race, a sprint cup race, uh, is the tell-all. Oh, boy. That had to be interesting. Yes, it was. So he rants about how he knows everything about something, but he doesn't know dit squat. That's right. Wow, that's that's good job on now, that. Now, but the years have been kind to him, and the he, years have been he has kind. learned more. Um, but uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. He's al- he's always a good interview. Usually mm-hmm. he's here, but he's. Have we had him on the show before when I've hosted? No. I you, thought we you have had. Al Pierce? No, you have not. Um, Al Pierce is uh, usually is here. Well, that's the one you're talking about that usually would come to the show. I thought you mentioned a couple of people that. I didn't mention him. Oh, you didn't? Of course, no. the one person you don't mention. No, there's many people I haven't mentioned. Well. Just look at the list on my cell phone of names and you'll realize there's a lot I haven't mentioned. Well, <laughs> if you got a lot of names, you better start a list. I'll get you a scroll of paper. And you can just keep going and going about no, it. No, I don't need to do that. I just go to my website. And yeah, and then you just show a picture and you'll be like, oh, that guy I know. This is how. Blah, 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 Anywho. Blah, 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 blah. Um, Brendan Newberry races in the truck series as well as Timothy Peters. He uh, races from out in California is where they're based out of. All right. So. Out in Cali. But anywho, yep, uh, nationwide race was pretty good. Uh, Robert Richardson fared pretty well. He came home. Carl in one piece. <laughs> Had a nice new paint job, I noticed. It was oh, wow. white with red instead of uh, red with uh, black and white. That's nice. Uh, then uh, Mike Wallace, he did good too. Mm-hmm. Let's see, who else? Who yeah. else? Do tell. If you can remember. Let's, did, don't forget see, that the name. Bristol races, I didn't sleep through. I got to watch most all of them. Yeah. Well, haven't you always heard when <laughs> when we were at the dirt track, the guys were saying when they watch NASCAR races, they usually catch the first 15 and the last 20. And they're sleeping in between. I know, because, yeah. Mike, Mike, not to be a little mean, Mike, my grandpa, he'll be watching it. The next thing you know, he'll be out for a little bit. And then he'll wake up around like the last ten to five laps. I don't know how he does it. It's like a little timer in his head, I guess. Oh yeah. 
That's what it even, is. Because then you miss the good stuff sometimes. I, I can know. tell you, I do the same thing. Oh, I know. That doesn't surprise me about you. It's about me. Yeah, then again, they like Mom says, if you missed any wrecks or anything, they show that in the news so you can catch up on what happened. Well, they also play it again. 50 a million times. times. Anywho. Over and over. All right, now we can get to the Sprint Cup race. Yes. Tony was not happy with Mike Kenseth. I don't think he was at all. Hence the helmet I mean, toss it, right to the... Now, you watched the wreck. Mm-hmm. What was your feelings on the wreck? I was like, oh... Lord, this should be. This is not gonna be good because I know Tony. I know. I know Tony was mad. Like a, as soon as I saw it happen, I'm thinking he's probably pissed. Well, what I'm trying to find out, who do you think caused it? Um, I think it was a little both of their faults. I think they both had him. Had a that's help the out. that's the political answer. Yes, I'm being nice about it. So I'm gonna let you have all the hard stuff. Uh, uh Tony Tony had given Kenseth room. Kenseth came up up into him to push him up higher mm-hmm. and by doing that it caused both cars to yep. rock Tony tried to back off and keep from having anything happen and then didn't work out no and 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 the bad thing for Tony instead of getting out of the car and throwing his helmet granted if he had gotten in the car drove around the pit road the car was not hurt that bad because once they got it back in the garage within a couple of laps he was back out mm-hmm. and all it did was push in a little bit they could have pulled that out could have gone out, did a lap, came back in, worked on it more, do a lap, come back in. Mm-hmm. While it Easily was under yellow, solved. and he would have finished a lot better. Yeah. So that was that was the screw up I saw on his part. Oh yeah. The, because let the anger issue come back to the old Tony there. Oh yeah. So. Sure did. But and then. Uh, Danica, she crashed. Danica. Poor girl. I, f- I felt bad for her because I agreed when they were saying that the crash really didn't have to happen. Like she she was fine. She's she like you said earlier before the show. You're kind of talking about all the races and what we've watched. Like she's just doing good. She's racing. She's staying out of trouble. She's doing her thing. And then next thing you know, she's involved in this crash that really wasn't necessary. And I felt bad for her. I really did. Because you don't see much women drivers in this sport. So when I do see them, I'm a real big supporter. And I give her credit for what she's done and what, how well she did race. It's just a shame that she had to, you know, end it the way she did. Crashing that way. What are you doing? Reagan Smith. Reagan Smith. All right. Reagan Smith, rather, sorry. Reagan? Okay, make up your mind. R E G A N. And the number? Uh, I think he was, what, 79, 89, something like that? I think it's, it's 70, around the 70, 70. I, I don't know. Maybe 78. It could be 78, 79, somewhere in the 70 it range. Oh, uh, water, please. <laughs> We're really laid back today. but We're always laid back. Uh, We're always laid back, but Reagan really didn't have to, uh, he didn't have to crash it. Not to be... A little picky with him or me mean or anything, but she was fine. She was staying out of trouble. There was, I don't think there was a need for that, right? And that's just another caution added to Bristol. And and Bristol's known for crashes, crashes, and lots of cautions and things of that sort. So that just had to add on to the many that night. You know, I, I, I feel bad for the people that go out and they do what's called the rental ride. You go out, you rent the race car, and they usually have a crash clause with it. And with Bristol, it's almost like a given. <laughs> <laughs> Something's going to happen. And you know, how much before I I ha- know, as soon as I get ready for a Bristol race and I'm sitting there and I'm getting ready to watch it, and I'm just like, okay, what's going to happen this time? Because you know something's going to happen. When it's Bristol, you know there's going to be a big crash or something big's going to happen during that race. So I always ask myself and I try to guess. I'm thinking, okay, so what's going to happen this time or this race in Bristol, it's going to be pretty, pretty big or going to be memorable because it's. Well, now if you want something that was pretty big and memorable, did you catch the modified wheel and modified race no. the same night as the truck race? No. Joe Scarborough was supposed to race in that. Right. Bristol, remember that when we had yeah. him on the show? Yes, I did. 
Well, they had so many cars, and he unfortunately did not get to qualify. What are you doing? Let's talk racing. What did you do? You did Let's talk wrong. racing. You actually hit the wrong button. You did that no, on purpose. Yeah. What's going on? Hey, pretty good. What's happening, Brandon? Oh, dude, just taxi. Got off work, uh, getting stuff done at the race shop here in Vegas, California, and uh, getting ready. I'm actually going to run an SRO race here in Vegas on uh, on September 8th, so I'm excited to do that again. Cool. Sounds great. You were at Bristol, too, right? No, we actually didn't uh, make Bristol. We Aww. had in and, uh, and, and had a pretty good run there, but had a, I, I guess just you know, with, with what we're doing this season, we decided to... To make trips back to places that we've been to this season, like going back to Martinsville and going back to Kentucky, and and uh, actually going back to Michigan, like we just went to after we had the Arca race there. So we figured we'd you know try to go back to places twice and and try to get better. So hopefully uh, next season we can get uh, our trucks over to Bristol. Yeah, yeah. We were just getting ready to get into uh, how the modified races looked at the Bristol right before the truck races ran. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I I'm sure everyone got to see that all on TV, and that was a pretty uh, crazy melee. And and, uh, and and so sometimes it happens like that. You know, the person who who causes the big wreck actually uh, gets out of it unscathed. You know, it's, it's kind of a a stuck up for what else he got into it. But but uh, Ryan Newman did, did a good job and just kind of got a front row seat for all of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's just so wild when all of a sudden you see cars running over top of each other and spinning over top of each other. It was. It's like, wow, how'd that happen? <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, whenever, whenever the bike <coughs> got on top of the other and did a complete 360 or whatever, it looked very synchronized. I'm not going to lie. It, it did. It was pretty. Synchronized spinning. <laughs> yeah. I, we, <laughs> during the Olympics, I was actually saying we need to have a event called synchronized spinning for race car drivers. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I hate I hate to say it was pretty, but it was it was uh, it was it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. But oh my God! Anyway, uh, doing our usual format, we've got Brennan Newberry on the phone, a driver of many different divisions, trying to parlay something good and big in the in the uh, Craftsman yeah. tr- no Camping World Truck Series. Oh, uh, say find the word now. Find find the word you're looking for. It's close enough. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, give us a little bio so some of the new listeners uh, get to learn something about you. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, my name is uh, Bernie Mewberry, 22 years old, Bakersfield, California, born and raised, and so uh, just I've you know, been racing since I was nine years old, starting go karts here in California. I uh, ran Uzi Sports uh, Trade Midget. I uh, ran what what we call the SRL Southwest Tour Series out here, which are pretty much uh, souped up super late models, and, and we travel up and down the California coast, and, and we also go to places like Vegas and uh, Rocky Mountain Raceway and Salt Lake City. I started running that when I was about 17. When I was 20, I started in the NASCAR uh, K&M Pro Series West, where I ran the, the, the Toyota All-Star Showdown, and, and I ran, uh, I think, about 10 races now, which uh, which is actually a pretty cool series to run for people you know who like to get developed in, in NASCAR. And, and actually, uh, this season I started uh, for the first time in the NASCAR Campbell World Truck Series. So I had to correct Rob there. But anyway, started uh, the Campbell World Truck Series. I'm running a part-time schedule this year. Just, just trying to get my feet under me with my uh, in-step motorsports team. We're <laughs> brand new to the truck series. Trying to, uh, trying to get my name out there and trying to get the, the team some really good uh, runs and performance. And then also, um, you know, just like what I just said, uh, I run many different... Uh, you know, series and stuff. I obviously ran uh, in the uh, Arga racing series. So, you know, I've, uh, I'm have i running a couple of those races this year. So, you know, I've, I've uh, raced plenty of different things. I'm loving every second of it. Cool. All right. That's what I love to hear. Yeah, we'll have to get up with you when you're back down here at Martinsville because we usually go to that race as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I didn't get to see you at Martinsville the first time, but I got to you at uh, Rockingham earlier this year, so it, it was uh, really good to finally put a face with the name and, and get to talk on the show, so it was a lot of fun. Yeah, we traded the Martinsville race for the uh, Rockingham race, so. <laughs> All right, well, well, that's uh, 
I mean, heck, Rockingham was a really cool event. I mean, with it being the, it was the debut of the truck there, it was, it was a really cool deal to be a part of. I was glad that, that I was there. I had a lot of fun out there. I mean, I wish I would have run better, of course, but, but uh, I had a lot of fun out there. I mean, it was, it was a really cool event. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I Hey, you were part of history at the Rock, also. Uh, so I mean, that was cool. I, what I did miss was getting the picture of all you guys out there on the front stretch. I think it's, is that where they took the big picture of everybody? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I had a picture of it on my Facebook, so I mean, I could uh, I could send it to you if you'd like. Cool. That'll work. Yeah, because I I was running around doing so many different things, and I can usually do. Yep, yep, yep. Mm. Uh, I saw Andy Hillenberg for a while, and a couple other people, and. Just uh, and, and, and I'll tell you what was really cool about the deal is every time that Amy Hillenberg walked, walked in the driver's meeting and was announced, every single driver, every single crew member, every fan there gave him a standing ovation. And I can't tell you uh, any, any other place that I've heard louder uh, cheers and hand claps for than, than Andy Hillenberg whenever, uh, whenever we, whenever the truck there, you got to go back to the rock. So it was, uh, it was very cool. Yeah, now, he also returns the favors back to the people as well, because uh, I've known when I've talked to him, uh, and whenever he's talking, to, if I'm talking with him or at the track or something like that, and somebody comes up and he immediately will introduce us and you know tell him, hey, you got to watch these guys on Let's Talk Racing, and when he <laughs> and when he's on the show too, he does great. He loves it. He before the inaugural race, we had him on three times and loved every one of them. Oh my gosh, I know he. He's so good, and, and, and like you're saying, I mean, with the fans, I mean, he had so much interaction with the fans, the drivers, and the team. It was just a big fan-friendly and even family-friendly environment. I mean, he, 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 he let, uh, you know, fans in uh, the pit, and, and, and they actually got to go to the driver's meeting. So it was a, a very, very, very cool event to, to be a part of, whether you were a driver or a fan. Yeah, uh, I had... Uh... Um. Oh shoot, Mike. Uh, um. Um. Mike. Oh shoot, used to be a. a Is my truck Blake. Driver. Oh lord. Um. Oh gosh, Mike and Angie. Uh, he, you know, Mike, don't you? You're, you're kind of breaking up with me, man. I'm not sure if it's Mike okay. or yours. Um. <laughs> oh gravy. You still there? Yeah, I'm still it's here. Gravy. <laughs> I was trying to. Uh, He's trying to think of a name. His mind's actually drawing a blank for once. No, I've got the the face right in front of me. Uh, Mike and his wife Angie. <coughs> Mike used to drive trucks back uh, in the very beginning. Um, oh, it hit me in a minute. But anyway, uh, he took us out. Me and uh, one of the guys from the from the show, and we did some laps around there. And uh, one of the. So true. Will you please oh, try your call again? Lost oh, we lost him. We lost him. Mike, wow. His name Mike Wallace. Mike. Well, there he is again. Hello again. We're going to try this again? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Sorry to make you uh, read. One more time. Again. I apologize. That's oh, all right. You're fine. That's all right. It, it happens. We get you. We can hook you up with a good cell phone company, too. Hey, you know what? Uh, I mean, like, like, like now, Scott, I'm not sure there's anyone better than Sprint. I don't know. My Verizon, I don't have any issues with that sucker. <laughs> no, yeah, of course you don't. You and your Hold fancy phone. I better, I better get them pay for commercial airtime here. We, we'll just leave them alone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, well Roger, I have to ask. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure who this young lady is that's on the phone with us, so you might have to introduce me. Uh -oh. I apologize for that. That's, this is Crystal Her. Hi, nice to meet you. She's actually my niece. Yeah, I'm Roger's niece, and I'm helping him out with the show. I've been on it for... For a while now, about a month, maybe? I think. All right. All right. Well, I, I haven't been on the show in a while, and, and I can't say that I've ever uh, done a show with you, so it's a pleasure to meet you. You're doing a great job. Oh, thank you very much. And it's nice to have you on the show and to get to interview you. Um, oh. About Bristol, I asked a question. What did you think about uh, Tony throwing his helmet, and how do you feel about him not getting fined for it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I, I know that in racing there, there's plenty of times where where drivers get you know 
plenty of frustrated and actually want, want to throw more than uh, than their helmet. Other <laughs> <laughs> want to throw a couple fists in their face, right? <laughs> but but um, but you know, in in uh, in, in my regard, you know, I was always taught that uh, you know that that you pretty much have to keep your emotions in check and. And no matter how upset you get, that, that isn't really uh, right. So, you know, do I think that, that he could have been fined? Yes, I believe that, you know, the other drivers have been fined and, you know, and, and, and kind of uh, sought, sought out as, you know, of that being deemed, you know, unsportsmanlike yeah. things for things such as that. So, and, and I guess if I were to say something, I'd say it was very unsportsmanlike and, and um, you know, whether or not he, he got a fine, it was, it was still looked at by many, even myself, as as uh, unnecessary. Now, Reagan Smith, he uh, got Danica Patrick. She got in a crash with him, and she was doing fine. She was kind of minding her own business, just racing as she was, and she got in a bad crash, and he kind of spun her out. Uh, do you feel like the, uh, the officials and the other hosts were saying that crash couldn't have been caused? Do you agree with that, and do you feel like it was necessary? Um... You know, in uh, also in both these drivers' defenses, I think uh, that you know, racing on a track, especially one like Bristol, where it's very fast, it's very tight, and, and things like that. And I do know that uh, sometimes your lines and and uh, paths may cross, and and so you know, if it if it could have been you know avoided, then then uh, you know then apparently it wasn't. You know, I I don't. Uh, Again, I wasn't in the, either of their shoes. Could, could it have been avoided from our, you know, uh, standpoint as, as uh, spectators? Yeah. And uh, but prior from the driver's standpoint, you know, it was it was just a racing mistake or or something like that. But I'll, I'll tell you what, though, spinning out and uh, and, and wrecking and, and having feuds like uh, like Tony and Kenseth and mm-hmm. like uh, and the other guy that that makes for uh, that makes Bristol Bristol, I believe, and, oh, and that's yeah. what. You know, sometimes fans want to see, and and, uh, and and how much NASCAR says they don't. I really think uh, that the NASCAR lives off uh, rivalries. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, yeah, uh, all sports live off of rivalries. If it wasn't for rivalries in sports, it, say that? it wouldn't be that entertaining. Well. You know what? You know, be quiet. Rivalries. I, that's the one word I have a hard time with. Okay, <laughs> so you keep your mouth shut <laughs> and don't pick on Aluminium. me. Aluminium. I say aluminum fine. It's just rivalry. I have a hard time with that word, okay? Oh, goodness. Anyways, besides you picking on me as usual, if it wasn't for that, you know, the sport I, wouldn't be as fun. I apologize for making you say rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> Make her say it all the time. We'll have, we'll have to get you to meet her, too, up there at, uh, at Martinsville. We'll yeah. try to bring her up there, too. Uh, earlier, before the phone got cut off on you, I was uh, trying to remember who it was. It was Mike Skinner. No, he thought of the name. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we had him, one of our other guys, and his wife was in the back seat, and he started saying something about you know the stuff going around the track and everything. I said, "You can do whatever you want. You're not going to scare us. We both drive race <laughs> cars." He says, "Oh, okay." And Angie immediately says, "Don't you dare!" <laughs> oh lord. So we sort of he sort of backed off, but it was it was good doing some some laps with him and talking about the track. And uh, actually stopping up uh, up there in turn four, and I, w- I was surprised that truck did not roll over. <laughs> I, it, it's pretty bank, you know, and I've realized that about like, a couple different tracks, especially Martinsville. You know, when, whenever you hear people, you know, um, wh- whether it be drivers or commentators saying, man, this track is flat. And so flat to me means zero degrees banking whatsoever. <laughs> and I believe Martinsville has like six or so degrees, and... And and so I'm like, well, heck, you know, that didn't, didn't really do us justice. But another place that that never really gets us justice, um, you know, just from watching on TV, is Dover. Oh yeah, oh. there been... is incredible. Oh yeah, I, I've been out there. That's that's a great place too. Usually we have the PR guy gets on the show with us too the Wednesday before the the race at Dover. Yeah, yep, and uh, and I actually got to run the K N Post Series East. Car there, and I'll tell you what that that was definitely a an experience. And and if the truck series goes back there, which I'm sure they will in uh, 2013, I'll be excited to go there as well. <laughs> yeah, our our next guest is Al Pierce. He writes for Auto Week magazine. I don't know if you know him or not. 
I, I, I've never got an opportunity to meet him, no. Okay, Aww. I'll have to introduce you when we're at Martinsville then. Uh, he uh, actually had his car break down up at Dover when he was reporting on a race. And I took our race hauler up there and loaded him up and brought him back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm, I'm sure uh, a deed like that will, will never be forgotten by him. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm keep, I keep adding on to all these nice things, too. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got a big list of that, too. Uh, People he knows and yeah. things he's done. <laughs> well, anywho... Let me go ahead and let you get going. I'm going to get up with you later on about what I texted you. Okay. Because uh, we, we might want to borrow a, a car since uh, we, we have an event out in that area. We want to possibly do a a uh, wrap on it uh, to possibly get a nice little sponsor rolling. All right. Well, so, that, that, that sounds good to me. Uh, but, but, but before I go, you know, I, you know, again, Roger usually tells me to do this, so I, I'm actually ahead of him. I have to thank uh, I have to thank all the people who helped get, get me here. Come on, Roger, you should be on top of this. Come on, come on. I was I was <laughs> leading into it, and, and it's fine if you jump out there. That's that's what taking the lead is for. <laughs> I was going to say it, but oh well. You got to give it a little gas and go when you got to. Yep. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, you know, again, you know, I have to thank everybody from NCS Motorsports. Uh, my my crew chief Dan Deering Hoff has been really helping us this year to, to get better and. And go faster. Uh, yeah, even our uh, general manager Gary Collins, you know, who who works his tail out to try and make this race team succeed. Uh, and talking about the race team, I have to thank my my uh, parents, Bob Monica and Newberry Dave, you know, supported me since I started racing, and, and even continue to support me, even though uh, how much of a pain I can be sometimes. <laughs> so, so I have to thank them for everything. I have to uh, thank uh, Iron Cloud Performance Gloves, Draker Technologies, and and uh, Carson Racer. Everybody. From Carson Racing, whether it be Terry Carson or or uh, Kristen or Tanya, they are such great people. They have an online racing magazine. Go check it out. It's at www.carsonracermagazine.com, and they have plenty of stories. Uh, whether it be uh, you know my racing family or Cameron Steele and his racing family, they even have um, mechanical tips for for people you know less mechanical savvy, you know, who want to learn about shocks or motors or or anything of the racing sort, and even they, they have models each and every month. So, so race cars and models we, with each other. I'm not too sure what else they, uh, a male NASCAR fan would want. Just, just letting you know. So, uh, so it, it, it's definitely a good website. So go check that out. And uh, Roger, thank you very much for having me on the show. And it was very nice to meet your niece. And I can't wait to uh, see you guys at Martinsville. And all, right. all you got to do is later on watch the video once we upload it to YouTube, and yep. then you can actually physically see her. Yep. <laughs> all right, well, well uh, I just might do that. Okay. Um, right. There was one other thing. Oh, uh, if you ever try to do the East K&N again out here at Langley Speedway, we do uh, have the K&Ns come out once a year. So if you ever decide to come out and race over here at Langley Speedway, yeah, come on come out. Come on we'll have down. Some fun. Uh, all right. Uh, I have to... Uh, I'll have to put, put my two cents in on the schedule connection. I'll see what I can do. All right. All right. Have a good night. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll talk to you all later. All right. All right. Thank bye, you. Bye, bye. All right. Bye. All right. That was good. I knew what I felt good telling, but I'll text it to you. You forgot to tell him something. What did you forget? I was going to tell him about one of our new sponsors on the show. Oh. And called the auctionhotspot.com. Auctionhotspot.com. The Auction. The auctionhotspot.com. He's there getting all fancy now. Hey, well, when you put the name out there, you got to put the whole name. I know you got to put the whole name, but that's like geez. Stuart Racing instead of Tony Stewart Racing or Stuart Haas Racing. You got to have all of it there. But anywho. Oh, Raj. Hi, Tony. Yeah, really. Oh, yes, it still looks. He's good. laid back. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's laid back. We'll put it that. <laughs> Make the cough. Getting all choked up, are you? Yeah, all all right. I'll choke up. Yeah. All right, I'm going to make a, another quick call here. you make a quick call to who? Our next guest. Oh, you're going to call him? Usually we, we wait for them to call us. You said to call him. Whenever. I didn't know that. I thought hey. he was going to call like we'll still, and you kind of left me out of the loop on that. By the way, if you talk too loud, it will overdo the speaker on this, and you can't hear them talk. Hey, Al! Hey! Let's talk racing! He knew that. Yeah. I know he knew that. <laughs> we usually say it, so I thought I'd say it. We got we got a newbie on online here I with us. I ain't that new. 
To him you are? Well, yeah. Because he's not met me yet. <laughs> Anyways, it's yeah, nice be a, yeah. It's nice to meet you, Al Pierce. I'm Crystal Her. I'm Roger's niece, and I'm helping him out with the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, i, I got to have somebody prettier than me on here, you know? Yeah, it's really hard to outdo Roger's good looks. Gosh, it's, it's so difficult. Don't get him started on that. <laughs> That's a pick on you some, Rog. You know it's because I love you. So you say you're heading down to Atlanta, or you are at Atlanta? Uh, I'm in Charlotte right now. I'm going to Atlanta. I'm going to make the rest of the trip tomorrow morning. All right. I'm, I'm in Charlotte right now. I'm going to stay here tonight and uh, go to Atlanta tomorrow and be at the racetrack all day. I guess Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, Maybe no. Monday if last year's any indication. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. Well, at least the the, th the hurricane is steering further west of you, so you oh, won't yeah. have to worry too much about that, hopefully. The hurricane looks well, bad. Well, we had a lot of rain last year, so I don't know what's happened, but I'll be there as long as I need to be. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, we have Al Pierce on the phone. Yes. He writes for Auto Week magazine. All right, that's so cool. Okay, and for those that haven't heard, heard about you, you. Give us a little profile of yourself. What all you've done? Oh, uh, do we have time? Yeah. Yeah, we got. We I have. allocated a half hour for you. I like that. Do we have time? <laughs> and you know we're on the internet, so it's not like you're on TV where you have to stop at seven o'clock, eight o'clock, whatever. I know. We just go. So, so it's okay. You, know, you, you, you got there, time. You talked for an hour and a half one night. Remember? Well, you didn't stop me. Well, <laughs> it was going good. Why the hell should we? Well, let's talk about your boy last. Oh, Lord. In Bristol. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a good shot if, if he was aiming for the front of the car. Yeah, I was planning on asking that. How'd you feel about him not getting fined? Um, why, should, why should they find him? We gave him the, he gave NASCAR the best TV clip of the night. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <coughs> I, remember, I remember in 1979 when, when uh, Kale and Donnie wrecked on the backstretch and then Bobby stopped and had that big fight. I called Bill France on Tuesday and I said, Are you going to penalize or fine them for what they did? And he yelled at me in effect and said, Hell, I'm not going to fine them. I should pay them for providing more publicity than I could ever afford to buy. <laughs> so, uh, now NASCAR, you know, I mean, there's no reason. All the guys have thrown him once. We've seen it. We've seen it for years. And, uh, you know, Tony's on the cusp of maybe maybe not making the chase. <laughs> I don't think they want to do anything to him to keep the defending champion out of the chase. Yeah, he's got... Uh... And really, if you, look at, if you look at the replays pretty carefully, I think, I think that Tony and Matt both got so stubborn and so big-headed that neither would give the other an inch. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's what got them. Told you they had just thought about what they were doing just a second and waited just a second and let one or the other go. They'd have still finish top ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I told Rod. He's like, which one do you think caused the crash? I was like, well, both kind of did. And he's like, you're just being political and nice. And I'm like, oh, in my opinion, they both kind of caused it, you know. Well, I sat there and said, Kenzie. If either, listen, if either one had had any, any common sense for just a second. It would not, it would have been a, a no-happening thing. Yep. Yeah, and realize, they both realized <laughs> what they were about to do. And just just one of the other, just give for a second, straighten up, and, and keep racing. They'd have been better off. But, uh, you know, if, I guarantee you, if Tony, for some reason, doesn't make the chase, and he possibly might not, it's, it, you know, He's not locked in by any means. No. But if, yeah. if, if, if Tony doesn't make it, uh, now Matt, I think Matt's locked in, but if Tony doesn't make it, he's got nobody to blame in this case but himself for what happened the other night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I pointed out, I said, all he had to do instead of getting out, throwing the helmet, just stay in the car, drive around to the pits. The car wasn't hurt that bad. I mean, when he eventually got to the pits, they put him right back out. And it, it was 14 laps down just for taking all that time uh, because it just barely bent the front end in a little bit. All they had to do was tug on it and throw him back out to the mm -hmm. wolves. 
Well, well, you know, you know how he is, Roger. He's uh, he's gonna he's gonna take every opportunity he can to uh, <coughs> to make somebody else look bad. <coughs> I'm sure when they cut the camera on, he knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just it's unfortunate that he. Yeah, it's a great year last year, and things went so well. And now here he is. He's very close to maybe fall. You know, if he had a bad day at Atlanta and, and even a mediocre night at Richmond, he may not make it. Mm-hmm. It's possible he could not make it. Wow. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's got enough sense to realize that you know X number of positions each night will be good enough. But, you know, you've heard it said a thousand times, when they put the helmet on, they cut off their brain. No, it's, it's, no, t- it's I don't too like tight that. around that artery like and it just kills them. Yeah. Helmet's on, brain's off. All right. They just, they just when, that, when they tighten the strap a little bit too much, they just cut off all thinking. Yep, cuts that circulation <laughs> right off. Thinking is like a switch, out like a light. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really surprised that that after after Tully threw his helmet and the crowd loved it so much, I'm surprised that Danica didn't throw hers. I was going to ask that one too. Lincoln <laughs> Smith in that race. So I, she, I thought she started to pick up the helmet to get ready to do it, <laughs> and then it didn't go any further than that. I was I, I was thinking it would be good. I mean, because got... the guy said, "Are we going to have another helmet throw?" Instead, but... she just pointed her finger at him. She she pointed him out, and like they thought the crash could have not have happened. Do you agree with that? Yeah, probably so. I mean, you know, the thing about Bristol is it's Bristol. They had they had what fifteen cautions. They had people beating on each other all night long. Oh yeah. And they had drivers spin out, and everybody, and and nobody in TV, and nobody in the media. Made a, made a terribly big deal about the wrecks, except hers. Yep. You know. Now, yeah. Tony and Matt were different because if, if Tony hadn't thrown the helmet, the deal with Kendrick would have been just another wreck. Yeah. Yeah. And, no, and, sure. and I, I kept thinking, okay, she's smart enough to know that her team owner has already thrown the helmet one time. You know, she doesn't want to throw a helmet and get anybody else mad at her. So... Uh, but you know, t- TV is going to hone in on that kind of stuff. TV loves that stuff. Oh yeah. If if drivers just get out and smile at each other and shake hands politely and go to neutral corner, nobody cares about that. Good. See, yeah. they want to see fist fly and helmets and accusations and stuff like that. So. Yeah. My my question would be: Did they use the same helmet when he went back out? No, NASCAR got it. Uh, goes for auction. <laughs> no, no, right. Well, I think what the I think what NASCAR is thinking is, it's probably been the, the the structural integrity has probably been compromised to some extent. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, definitely. If, if and, and I'm and I'm sure that somebody told the crew chief or somebody go get another helmet. He can't use this one because we. I mean, it may be a. There may be a, a, a crack in it we can't see. It may not be. It may not be crash worthy anymore. So yeah. Yeah. it's throw worthy, but not crash worthy. Yeah, it's throw worthy. Yeah, I think I think NASCAR has got the helmet, and at some point they might give it back. But you know, uh, they'll probably put it up for the the children uh, NASCAR. Well, they might. Yeah, they could do that too. So that would, that would probably that would fetch a pretty penny. I bet. Oh yeah. Yeah. So who's who's not going to make the chase? Ooh. Oh boy. Um. Well, apparently it looks like Ryan's not going to make it. Well, if if Bush has the same kind of problem in Atlanta that that Newman had in Bristol, they flip flop and go right back the other way. Yeah. If Carl Edwards wins the race, then a bunch of guys way below him in points don't make it. So. You know, Edwards kind of Edwards kind of holds a a key there. Yeah. Uh, if Tony drops out of the top ten and still has three wins, then that will take a wild card, uh, not away from Kane, unless somebody wins a race and ties him with two wins. 
But it's it's really you know I told somebody the other day that when they first came up with this system, I wasn't I wasn't really sure if it would sustain interest all the way through. But you know, for the last couple of three years, this most wins outside the top ten prospect or or, or condition scenario. That's really kind of made it fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, right now you got what Casey Kane's the first wild card, yep. and Kyle Busch is the yep. second. Right now, Busch is the second, and I think Gordon right now is the third yep. with one win, and I think Newman might even be behind Gordon, and Ambrose is behind Newman, and Logano is pretty much way down the line somewhere. Yeah. He, uh, let's see who else has got to win. That's about it for as far as the wins yep. go. Yeah, everybody else with a win is in the top ten and most likely will stay there. But uh, you got a bunch of guys with one win. Now, if somebody got a second win and Kane had a bad night, then he would slide down to, say, the second wild card spot. And then if he has another bad night at Richmond and somebody wins a second race, Kane could be out. Yeah, yeah. So Edwards... Conceivably, Edwards could win two races and get in. Uh, Bush could win another one and, and, and get in. Kane could have two bad nights and fall out. Denny Hamlin could fall out. But Denny, he's got three wins. That doesn't matter, though. Okay. All right, let me ask you this. What if Denny has an absolutely horrible night at Atlanta and drops to 11th in points? But he's still got three wins. Yeah. If Tony, what if Tony has an absolutely horrible night at Atlanta? He drops out of the top ten. So you got two guys, eleventh and twelfth, with three wins. And what if Denny has a horrible night at Richmond, and Casey Kane wins to get to three wins and moves up in points? Denny could be three wins, but the lowest ranked of the three win guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. Well, you got somebody in there you haven't talked about yet, Kevin Harvick. Well, yeah, he's got zero wins. And the thing about Harvick is he hasn't run well enough all year to indicate he can win a race. So all this stuff about, well, if Harvick wins two, he becomes a candidate. No, he hasn't run well enough to win one, much less two in a row. Yeah. So I kind of I kind of wonder about him. Yeah. It, almost the same way with Edwards. Edwards has not run really well enough. Edwards, you know, Richmond, he kind of got screwed out of Richmond back in May or April. But Ed, other than Richmond in May, April, Edwards hasn't run well enough to actually win a race on merit. The other night, the only reason he led late was he gambled on fuel, and obviously came up way short. Yep. You can't. So you can't think, well, okay, if Edward wins two, he gets a spot. He hadn't, he hadn't run well enough to win one. Why do you think he's going to win two? Yeah. Now, all of that fails to take into consideration this one little bit of trivia. Mm-hmm. After, after Richmond last year, how many races had Tony Stewart won? After Richmond, he won five. No, no, no. Oh. I'm saying at that moment, when the oh. flag fell to Richmond last year, how many wins did he have? Zero. Zero. That's right. They were talking about he made it into the chase without yeah. zero wins. Right. He had he was eighth in points, or maybe ninth, had zero wins, and nobody gave him a chance in heck of making of being the champion. You can say hell if you want to. Including himself. Yes. Yeah, because he even said he shouldn't even be there. Right. And ten weeks later, what happens? Him and Carl Edwards sitting at the top with tied. And... Right. By one position, mm-hmm. by one position over ten races, he was a champion. If Edwards had beaten him by any by one position, any anywhere in that chase, or had led more laps in one race, one little point. Yeah. Yeah. Anything. All thanks. I mean, and right now, it was so like we're beginning the beginning of this conversation. You've got Tony and Carl with the potential of not making the chase, right? And they were one and two last year. 
And the possibility is that two guys might make the chase with zero wins. Yeah. Harvick hasn't won. No, three guys. Harvick hasn't won a race. Martin Truex Jr. And, and Boy, I said Boyer has won. You're right. Forgot about Boyer. Boyer's got one win. So you got you got two of the top ten have not won a race, and, and they conceivably and likely will make a chase. You could have a three win guy not make a chase, and two zero win guys make it. Yeah. Which is why I think, and they'll never listen to me, and never have yet. Why should they start now? <laughs> me, me, you don't make the chase unless you want a race. I don't care if you're leading in points after Richmond. If you're 0 for 26, you don't you don't move forward. I'm sorry. I just if, if you're gonna if you're gonna allow guys who haven't won to make the chase over guys who've won maybe three races, then something's just wrong. That just doesn't seem right. So, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right, All right. I like that. Yeah, that works. Speaking of stories, uh, Roger says I have to ask you about your first interview. Oh, shut up. No! <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that now? <laughs> hey, Roger, Roger, it's a good thing I'm in Charlotte. I can only whip you, bitch. <laughs> come on, open up that can of whoop ass. Let's go. <laughs> right, let me tell you what. I may come to your studio next Wednesday night. Go for it. Oh, Lord. And after the show, we'll make you take me to Outback if i got to tell that story. Oh, don't, don't do shoot it. the messenger now. He I'll just told me to ask. I told, I told you that you had never met him, and everybody that knows him knows the story. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Lord. I'd rather, I'd, honestly, I'd rather tell it in person. All right. I think it'd be better in person, All right, well, too. you'd have to come here Wednesday her. next week, then, to uh, tell her. It'd be great to meet you, too. <laughs> Roger, the two dozen people who listen to this thing every Wednesday night, they've heard this story already. <laughs> so, I don't need to bore them again. But So I'm the only one? I'm the odd one out? I'm, a, I'm out of the loop? No, that's not no, there's fair. There's a lot of other people that has, if, if they have. Well, well I'll, I'll come out next quiet. Wednesday night about 7 o'clock, and I'll, I'll tell her the story off the air, <laughs> and you can take me to Outback. All right. All right. Sounds, sounds or, good. Or a slice of pizza will be fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna go enjoy the uh, Chinese buffet tonight. Yeah, afterwards. I'm gonna go to the Chinese place tonight. Oh, okay, that'll be good. That'd be good too. Yeah, y'all are y'all are all getting all excited about this weekend and next weekend. Um, it, Tony Tony Stewart jumped on the media last week about <laughs> we're, we're giving Danica. We put too much pressure on Danica. Right, I yeah. heard that. You guys are always talking to her. She's under all this intense scrutiny. Oh yeah. Yada. And I asked Tony last week at Mar at Bristol TV interview. I said, y "You have the power to control that. You can go to NASCAR and say to them, listen, you had Danica do a, pr a media session every race.'" Every single weekend, whether it's a nationwide race or a cup race or both, you made Danica come in the media room, sit at that table in front of all those microphones, answer questions for a half an hour. Would you please leave her alone for a while? Oh, yeah. Her, give her a break. Let her catch her breath some weekend. Don't, you know, don't make her come to the media where we ask her questions and she gets all upset about them. Well, excuse me, well, that's, you know, and Tony said, I can't control that. If I, if I asked NASCAR to not bring her in there, they wouldn't listen to me. They listen to you guys, but they won't listen to me. Hmm. Roger, do, do you feel like, I mean, is, is she, has she earned even half of the attention that we're giving her? Nope. So what do you do about it? I mean, Na NASCAR is, you, you know, that's their, their new their new uh, glamour part of it is having her and, right. and Dale Jr. Uh, you, you know how the, that rolls. As much as they can push to, to bring in new people, that's why they're doing stuff with Travis Pastrana. And I'm surprised they haven't pumped him up more mm -hmm. with stuff. 
Yeah, they backed off him a little bit. I don't know that he's quite quite the attraction that, that they might have thought he would have been. Um, Tony's PR guy pulled me aside last week and said, here's the deal. At, at every race we've been to, whether it's a standalone nationwide race like Montreal or Road America or Iowa or wherever, no matter where she goes, people want to talk to her. The TV cameras want her, the radio stations want her, the print media wants her, and we feel like we have an obligation to deliver her to these people. And I said, well, then explain to Tony that if your team, which means Tony and Junior, feel like they need to give her to the media every weekend, then don't complain to us about asking questions. Mm-hmm. You know, you bring her in the media room and you sit her down at that table with all those microphones in a room full of people. You, you're not going to let her sit there for five minutes without anybody asking anything. Mm-hmm. And, and if, if Tony doesn't like what we're asking, let him come in with her and act as her interpreter. Mm-hmm. Well, I say, we don't need to talk about that. You know, we don't need to talk about getting wrecked by Villeneuve, wherever. And, we don't, and, and I'm, let me tell you what. I'm so tired of this damn Canadian shoe story that she ran over a shoe leading in Montreal, and that cost her a win. Bravo, Sierra, if you know what I mean. Yes, you can say bullshit. Oh, well, okay, good. You can, I can't. Uh. That, that shoe had nothing more to do with her bad uh-huh. day than the cow jumping over the moon. But you know what? Uh, if you watch the race closely, she it's, actually hit a corner. Yeah. She hit a corner wrong, and that's what caused her problem. You can't break an axle. You can't break a panhard bar. You can't break a rear strut with a with a rubber shoe. You know, it's not like it was a red wing work boot. Yeah, it was, just, it was like a tennis shoe or a sneaker. Yeah, and she stood by that statement last weekend. She said, "Well, I was okay to hit that shoe." And, and yada, yada, yada. Well, didn't she realize that on Wednesday of that week, Tony Ewer Jr. came out and said, hey, guys, it makes a great story. The shoe had nothing to do with it. And and I had lunch with Elliot Sadler the Tuesday after that Montreal race, and he said the shoe had nothing to do with it. Bumping up on those curbs had everything to do with it. Yep. <clears throat> he said if you follow her and you saw that she went over the curb, Every chance she got, that's eventually what broke the 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 um, the actual in the panhard bar at the back, yeah, so, or whatever it was, a strut or something. Like, anyway, broke something in the rear end that had nothing to do with the shoe. And, and, and Tony Yuri told us or told the media on a conference call Wednesday the shoe had nothing to do with it. And yet there she was Saturday saying, or Friday saying, I was okay when I hit that shoe. Well, you were okay because you took the lead because everybody else pitted and you didn't. You didn't actually take the lead. Well, you did, but, you know, you got it. So, you know, she rode a long time, and she ran well up there for a while. Yeah. She was going to have to pit again, so it would have all eventually recycled back around. But I'm tired of this shoe. Quit telling me a shoe cost her a win because it didn't. Anyway. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I I wish I'd called Kyle Petty on that one. Oh man! Oh. You have to go back in our archives and and catch the interview I did with Kyle when we talked about Danica. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't I don't know what he said back then, but I'm sure now he'll say she's great for the sport. She brings a lot of attention. She's a mediocre driver. She's got really good equipment. But no other nationwide driver gets one. No other nationwide driver gets one percent of the attention she does. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, poor Elliot Sadler is leading in points. Nobody cares about him. Nobody cares about Stenhouse. Nobody cares about Allgaier. I mean, she's tenth and eleventh in points, which basically means she's one of the worst 
if you take all the guys who run all the races, she's like one of the worst of those three or four. I think only 15 guys who run them all who are, who are not starting park guys. They can take your starting park guys come out of the equation. So you've got about 15 drivers who are actually racing. By that, I mean really racing. And she's 11th or 10th or 12th somewhere yeah. among that group. She's 10th in points. And she's driving a car that's every bit as good or not better than a lot of the cars in front of her. So there you go. But I like her. She's she's great. She's great for the sport. She's a, she's a terrific interview, whether we want to talk to her or not. <laughs> so so um, I've, got, I've got a bet with a buddy of mine that she wins a race this year. I bet him a stake in Phoenix. She will win a race somewhere during the season. And um, he thinks it's impossible. I think, you know, and I don't, I don't know that she will take a race by the throat and just win it on merit. But pit stops may cycle right. She may gamble on fuel. Five guys may crash with one to go, and she's running seventh, and she knocks somebody out of the way. You know, it's possible. Yeah, the, so, the last part, her knocking somebody out of the way, I, I don't know if she's up for that yet. Do you? Well, she does it after the race. <laughs> she, roughed, <laughs> she roughed up Sam Hornish at, at Talladega. After the race, bumped a couple of guys on the cool down lap after the race. So, but she hadn't turned anybody yet. I don't know that she knows how. Yeah. Because in any car, you certainly don't you don't turn people. So, uh, I don't know. Well, here here's a question for you. What do you think about Johanna Long, as opposed to her? You know if. If you if you put her in in the seven car, she would probably do better because she was brought up in stock car racing. I mean, she won the the Pensacola, she won the Snowball Derby. Yeah, and, you know, she kind of got lucky and people people crashed and all, but still she won it. Danica won a race in Japan on fuel mileage. They both have won races. Um, I, I got a feeling Joanna has probably got more innate, natural, oval track stock car talent. But you can't, but you'll never know until you put them in each other's car. Yeah. Um, you know, Cole Witt's a rookie. He's pretty much outshining Danica. Um, hell, Austin Dillon. He's, you know, he's a rookie. And for a while there, Austin Dillon was, was a legitimate championship contender. So, you know, there you go. So, but she's good for the sport, Jim. She's in her, she's scheduled. I believe I looked at my schedule this morning before I left home. She's scheduled for four o'clock Friday afternoon Q and A in Atlanta. So, mm. they'll parade her in there, and somebody will say, "Well, how's it going?" And she'll say, "Well, other than Regan Smith wrecking me and getting a shoe lately, things are going pretty well." You know. So, and we'll say, get over the shooter. She had nothing to do with it. But anyway, and I don't know that Regan wrecked her as much as he hit her. I mean, people hit each other all over the place last, last Saturday night, and only half of them wrecked. So, I don't know. Somebody knows how to control their car. Mm. Well, she's learning. you got to give her credit. She's only run, she's run part of three seasons in Nationwide and, and only, what, five, five cup races. Um, I took great offense to an Auto Week colleague of mine, one of my one of my cohorts at the magazine, wrote a blog saying she had a great race at Bristol on Friday night. And I called him up and screamed at me and said, how dare you? What do you mean she had a great race? Well, she finished ninth. Yeah, but she was running 13th, with five to go, and probably ran out of gas, and Trevor Bain got wrecked. Hardy she had to pit. And two other guys had to pit late. She didn't pass anybody to get from 14th to 9th. If she had finished 14th, you wouldn't have said she had a great race. Well, no. Well, then, don't say she had a great race finishing 9th when she didn't do anything to get there. There were enough cautions that night where mm -hmm. hardly anybody got, I mean, 
people got laughed, of course, but, you know, there were so many cautions, she never got laughed. She ran between about 19th and 23rd, and then as the race went on, she moved from 15th to 19th, and then she went from, like, 12th to 15th, which is where she's been all year. Yeah. And she would have finished 12th, 13th, or 14th, because with five to go, that's where she was, and she ended up ninth and celebrating what a great run. Well, uh, your your idea of a great run and mine are not quite the same. Be, be nice if it was like, yeah, I raced them to it. In this case, I just coasted and, past yeah, them she, as they ran out of gas. She, she raced. She raced really hard at Road America in, in the in the August road race when Villeneuve wrecked her. She raced pretty good at Daytona in July until she got mixed up in a wreck, I think. Um, she's actually raced a time or two pretty hard. And I think, Roger, I've told you this on the show before. What she will do is she will find a comfort zone. She will find the cars she knows she can't pass. And she'll get behind those guys and she'll be ahead of the people that she obviously is better than. Right. She, she won't fall back, but she also won't go forward. And that comfort zone is about 15th to 20th. Well, in time, the 15 guys ahead of her, somebody's going to have trouble, and she's going to move up a spot. Then she'll move up another spot. She won't pass anybody, but she'll end up ahead of them because they had a flat tire, or they wrecked, or they had bad fuel mileage, or whatever. So she may have some really impressive finishes, but not a lot of great runs. And there's yeah. a difference. There's a huge difference in, in how you finish and how you run. So, you know, there you go. Oh, so yeah. have you already had supper tonight? Yeah, what's your chick fil Oh, um, good. I love that place. Their <laughs> sweet tea is awesome. And I love their food. I just love Chick-fil-A. You, you stole me there. I'm sorry. One of my favorite places to go eat. No. Roger, I may not eat between then next Wednesday night just because of you. Uh-oh. No problem. <laughs> I ain't scared. Yeah, you're not scared often. Anywho, I'm going to let you go because I do got to feed some other people here. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm Before they mutiny. I bet they don't, they don't know as much as I do, though. I know. <laughs> I'm looking well, forward to that story, though, so. <laughs> I'm just saying. Wednesday night, you'll be here. Yeah, I'll come out next Wednesday night, I think. I don't I don't believe I've got anything else planned. Well, I hope not. Drive down here. Yeah, next thing will Make be sure Richmond, you're right and, you're, and you're already around the corner from there, so it's not like you got far away to go. Nope. That'll be an easy drive for a change. No. Okay, I will see you guys next Wednesday night. All right, Al. Well, you say, do. Roger, call and remind me. All right. I'll make sure you remind him. Roger, the key word is call. Don't text. Okay. Yeah, he, he texts a lot, Moni. I don't text that much. Phone rings, I hear it. You text it? When you text, I may not hear it when it is that funny little noise. <laughs> Change the funny little noise. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Andy. Have, have, it a, have it the sound of Danica talking about the tennis shoe. That ought to let you know. I think you get annoyed after a while. I'm like a six-year-old girl at kindergarten, so. <laughs> Go have a good night. We'll talk to you next week, bud. I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. All right, All right bye. Thanks for being on the show. Man, you, you got one of those jabber jaws on here. <laughs> well, thank you for watching the show. It's Let's Talk Racing. Please tune in next Wednesday. Apparently, we're going to have... Al, Al Pierce. Al Pierce <laughs> on the show. Um, and even well, after he tells the story to me, I'll try to retell it. But uh, d don't push to get to me if I don't say it to justice or as good as he will. But be an interesting story to hear. It is good. Yeah. Bye. Hey everybody, we'll see you next week. Hi, my name is Natalie Sather. I drive the 94 K and N Lady Eagle Safety Wear Butlerville Seats Bell Helmets Hooker Harness Seat Belts Number 94 at South Boston Speedway. Be sure to listen to Let's Talk Racing TV. I'm Sam Hunter, I'm 42 car. I want to thank Let's Talk Racing. 
Hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Races. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. Hi, I'm Timothy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs> Let's Talk Racing is brought to you by PC Doctors, Computer Sales and Services. This doctor still makes house calls. And also Hampton Incredible Tees and Signs, both located at 1248 North King Street in Hampton, Virginia.